Good morning. This video owes itself to a worrying statement recently made by the Indian Army Chief General Manoj Pandey. While interacting with a media channel, General Pandey said in relation to war that land will be the decisive domain in war when contested borders are concerned. Now juxtapose this statement against China. After all, China has been identified as the primary threat to India. Then there are two issues that need to be discussed. One, he talks of contested border. That means what he has in mind is a border war. Whereas what the Chinese are talking of is a war of sovereignty. Since they claim Indian state of Arunachal Pradesh and the Union Territory of Ladakh, they are talking of a war of occupation. They are not talking of a border war. And the second thing, what General Pandey says is, he gives primacy to the land domain to the army. He is thinking of attrition war with China. And this is the traditional thinking of the army. And he is no exception that boots on the ground is critical for occupation of territory. As far as PLA is concerned, this statement does not hold good because they will be able to accomplish their objectives, what they claim, with minimal boots on the ground. I'll explain how. So to the start point is that their technology is so much more than India's that they can actually fight in seven domains, four domains more than the three physical domains that the Indian military can fight off land, air and sea. They can also fight in cyber electromagnetic spectrum, space and near space. So when you can fight in so many domains of war, your strategy is not one of attrition, but of cognitive defeat of the enemy. Now in cognitive warfare, the whole focus will be to attack and demoralize and defeat the will of the enemy both at the political level and the military level. He simply does not have the will to fight any longer. So the attrition is minimal. And how this will be accomplished is that at the political level, the PLA has a capability to shut down the nation to bring the civil life to a complete halt. And at the military level, they have the capability to attack the military leadership by shutting down all communications in the combat zone, whether it is Arunachal Pradesh or it is Ladakh. Let's start first with the whole of nation at the political level, what they can do. The key thing that they have is cyber. Please recall, they have been doing cyber attacks. And they intensified the cyber attacks of the Chinese. They intensified after 2020, May 2020, once the PLA came to occupy our territories in East Ladakh. Recall in 2020, there was a major power outage in Mumbai, where everything was shut down for about 24 hours. Then they have done cyber attacks in our hospital, all India Institute of Sciences. They've done cyber attacks in the nuclear plants. They've done cyber attacks in South Block. The whole purpose of these cyber attacks was cyber reconnaissance. Basically to get technical and operational data so that they could prepare the desired intensity digital weapons, software weapons which move in the cyberspace. And we know that software weapons in the cyberspace today have a capability of destroying physical infrastructure as well. So they would have prepared the digital weapons both for counter force as well as counter value targeting. So once they release all that, they decide to do these attacks. They will come in such a ferocity, let's call it cyber war. That means what they can do is the path shuts down the water shuts down, banking system doesn't work, the trains shut down, the ATCs at the airport doesn't work, so nothing really works. There will be total chaos. 
and that chaos will hit the political leadership. In addition to that, the Chinese have a capability to cut off the internet to India because their vessels are there which do the maintenance and the laying of subsea cables. They are there in the area. India doesn't have any vessels of that kind. So with the use of those vessels, although our internet is laid by the European countries, but Chinese are also in the area, they can cut off the internet also. Then by non-kinetic means, they have the capability to disorient and throw our satellites out of their orbit, completely debilitate them. So when you have problems in your satellites, you have massive cyber war going on, your internet is cut, everything shuts down. Now, let's go to the combat zone, what happens there. Now here they will have two options. First is that if the Chinese only decide to up the game in the grey zone areas, I mean grey zone operations we are told they keep happening every day on the line of actual control. If they decide only to do more game in the grey zone areas, I have already told you they have the capability to shut down the nation. But if they decide to do a war of occupation and reclaim their territories, what they allege are, they say are theirs, then they can combine this attack on the whole of nation with a war, a hot war, which is what they call a, a informatized war. Informatized war is a war where you deny information, communications to the enemy and you dominate the information. And that is not done by attrition, by killing the soldiers of the enemy in the combat zone. That is done by just hitting the nodes of communication. Because after all, there is a lot of digitization in the battlefield also. So it will be a combination of two things. They work together in the battle space, which is your cyber, cyber and electronic warfare. Now, electronic warfare is the combat which is done in the electromagnetic spectrum. We know that the seven waves of the electromagnetic spectrum, some part of those waves, some spectrum is used when you do anything. In, so it is the foundational domain for all the other domains, whether it is air, land, sea. I mean, nothing will work unless uh, if you do not have superiority or you have capability in the electromagnetic spectrum. And if the PLA dominates the electromagnetic spectrum, because how this works is that you have cyberspace, they put a malware, they put a digital weapon in the cyberspace. That is the virtual space. What is cyberspace? It is about computers, internets, routers, processors, wired, wired systems and wireless systems. In the wireless system, it is about waves and that is where the electromagnetic spectrum comes in. That means there is a continuum between the cyber cyberspace and the electromagnetic spectrum. And if you take this further, in fact, all these satellites which are there, they interact with the ground station through signals, again electromagnetic spectrum. That same malware can be made to travel through the cyberspace electromagnetic spectrum to the satellites and debilitate the satellite. The sensors of the satellites can be destroyed. So what we are talking about is we are talking about cyber. We are talking of electronic warfare, domination of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we are talking about capabilities to destroy the Indian satellites by non-kinetic means as well as kinetic means which is the anti-satellite anti weapons. So they can do all that. That can be done. Now, in addition to all this, once it is, they have done all this, now they bring in their kinetic forces. And their kinetic force will be what? The rocket force. Again, they, this is an exceptional thing. India has only three forces, which is Army, Air Force, Navy. The PLA has four forces. It also has a rocket force and now they are in the process 
of raising the fifth force, which is the near space force. Now in the rocket force, they have the ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, hypersonic missiles, all their missiles are there. And because hypersonic missiles, hypersonic cruise missile, hypersonic glide vehicles, they are specialized because they function only in the higher, uh, higher layers of the air, which is from 40 kilometers altitude to 100 kilometers altitude. That is where the hypersonic cruise and the glide vehicles work. They are thinking of a new force there also. So all these can be used. We all are aware they have the biggest, largest inventory of missiles today in the world, land-based missiles. And they have precision long-range artillery. Now this is what will be unleashed. This will be unleashed on targets which are well identified beforehand because in the mountains, the movement, the logistics from where it is coming, where are the roads, where are the tracks, where are the bridges, everything is known. Because they have this other capability and what is that capability is of persistent stare. That means 24 into 7, something that India does not have. They have their satellites, the Bedu satellites system of 45 satellites. Now this system will provide them a continuous situation awareness, a persistent stare. There is nowhere that the Indian military can hide in the combat space or even in the hinterland. All targets, the air bases, ammunition dumps, everything is identified. So these are all static targets. This is where the, the next salvos will come, intense salvos will come. Next. After that, then they have the bombers. India doesn't have bombers. Then they have the, uh, the PLAF, PLA Air Force, the jet engines. Then they have the drones and they have a huge variety of drones. So all these things will be used to basically after shutting down the communication to hit the command and control centers to ensure that the Indian Air Force even before it takes off it gets grounded they will be hitting the ammunition dump the patrol dumps patrol points so that they are not able to take off they have the capability mind you till now the soldiers the PLA soldiers have not come into play now once they have done all this what is the next step? Next is they have what is called the mini drones, the slaughter bots, which have a facial recognition systems, which means and they have shown a capability in Tibet to unleash them, to throw them by aircraft in hundreds. So it will be one, you know, they, they have the facial recognition, they will recognize the Indian soldiers and hit the soldiers. And if the soldiers are in bunkers, then they have the Thermobaric weapons, thermobaric weapons, they suck the oxygen, forcing the soldiers who are there in the bunkers to come out in the open. And then they have laser weapons, they have microwave weapons. Once they have used all this, what is there to lift? Now they have what, what is uh, 150,000, which is 1,50,000 they have. Airborne forces. PLAF itself has the airborne core, which has close to 80,000 of 1 lakh forces. Then they have air assault uh, divisions of the uh, PLA army. They will all be brought in the combat zone. Basically, they are not fighting at the forward edge of the war, uh, battle, battlefield, or the battle space. They are taking the whole combat zone into account. And this is the way the occupation will done. Please remember the 1991 Gulf War I called Operation Desert Storm. That happened in 1991. It was a war between a major power and a medium power. US military and Iraqi military. And everybody said that the Iraqi, you know, they, the Americans did a 43 days air campaign. But everybody said that, okay, once the air campaign is done and they come to the ground and the ground war starts, 
then we will see the spectacular results which the Iraqi uh, Republican Guards will show. And what we saw was 100 hours of ground war and 143 soldiers, American soldiers dead, that's all. And the war was lost by the Iraqis. Because there is no attrition. There is nothing called boots on the ground because you are hitting the entire combat zone and you have so much of capability. In addition to all that, there is the information war. In the information war, what they will do is they have wolf warriors. There will be information war will consist of misinformation. Then uh, it will have synthetic reality, deep fakes. All this will go on at the same time. And this is how the PLA will fight the war. With minimal casualties to yourself and minimal boots on the ground. Now, people will say that, look, what about India's nuclear weapons? All right. In May 2020, the PLA came and occupied something like 2000 square kilometers in eastern Ladakh. Did we do anything? Did we threaten with nuclear weapons? No. And mind you, as far as India is concerned, it has been stated repeatedly that our weapons are for deterrence and not for use. Did they deter the PLA? The answer is no. And then India has a no first use nuclear policy. And as I said, they have persistent step. They will have complete dominance as far as uh, uh, the visibility is concerned. And if they see any movement, they will be warning India because they have launch on warning capabilities. They could use that. So the point I'm making is it is an entirely different war, which perhaps even today, four years after the PLA has come to occupy, the Indian Army chief is saying that the primacy will go to the land domain. Let me answer that part now. The primacy should not go to the land domain when we talk of a war with China, but the primacy should be to the battle space, which is the continuum of cyber war and electromagnetic spectrum. This is where the primacy should be, because this is where the war will be lost or it will be won. If you do not dominate that, if you do not have superiority in this area, your communications are shut down and mind you the last word. It is absolutely important when you are fighting with a major power, which has a vibrant defense industrial sector and which can do the war surge. It does not matter whether the war is long and war or a war is short. A capability of that sort means that even in a short war, the PLA will be able to give intense salvos of whatever ammunition it throws. And I'm talking of precision strikes. I'm not saying they'll do carpet bombing of the entire combat zone. They don't have to, which is whereas on the Indian side, it will not be possible because they will always be constrained for ammunition if they do not have uh, a vibrant defense industry. And mind you, Atmanirbhar Bharat is simply a slogan as far as defense is concerned. This is a subject for another day. So the Bottom line, no primacy to land war. Please give primacy to the continuum of cyberspace and electromagnetic spectrum. Thank you.